Let's just stand here in the sanctuary here tonight. If you're watching live, we're glad to have you watching. If you're able to, go ahead and stand too uh, for a brief moment while we give God all the honor and all the glory. Father, we ask for a special blessing over this uh, teaching here tonight and this uh, service here tonight, Father God, as we teach about healing again, Father God, and we raise up and we honor your son, Jesus, and what he did at the cross. Father, we thank you for that now in Jesus' name. I ask for a blessing upon all those that are here, all those that are watching live, and anyone that peers into this ministry even briefly. Father, we thank you for that now, and not one word would be robbed from anyone here that I would be uh, speaking and saying what the Holy Spirit wants me to speak and say, and I give you glory and honor and praise for it in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen and amen. You're welcome to take your seats here tonight. If you're watching live via the internet, we're glad to have you watching. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and click subscribe and click like, and then even the little bell, and uh, give us a hand out there. Uh, if you're not on YouTube, go over there anyway. You can get to our YouTube channel by going to our website, mountainfaith.org. So go to our website and then click on the YouTube channel. You can see it right on the left-hand side. It'll take you in there. Click subscribe. You'll get notifications from us when we put up all of our videos in HD format, which you're not getting right now if you're watching live. So go ahead and do that. If you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and click like and share. This is going to be a very important message to many people here tonight as uh, God directed me early in the day on what we were going to be talking about. And uh, I see now that uh, God is correct in what he wanted me to teach on. Praise God. If you have, if you're here tonight or if you're watching live or if you've been uh, watching us for some period of time, become a regular financial partner with this ministry. It means so much uh, to me personally and so much. I know to the kingdom of God. Uh, we do so many things, but it's not just the things that we've already done. It's the things that we want to do. We want to improve uh, our facility. We want to improve our lighting and our all the different economies of of recording and putting out uh, our broadcast, our television broadcast and our online broadcast. Plus, we just went on television in Montana back in November, just a month and a half ago. And so now we're covering all of Montana and we wanna do more of that. But you make that possible. Uh, as your faithfulness, uh, as your faithful support. So you can faithfully support us by automatic donations. And if you don't know how to do that, uh, just give us a phone call or write us and we'll call you back and set up an automatic donation. That'll just uh, be an ACH or come off your credit card once a month or once a week, whatever you want to do. You can also give uh, online. There's four different ways to give. And if you download our mobile app, you can give that way through our mobile app as well. Why am I bringing this up? because we're starting out the brand new year, 2022, and I have a vision for this year of the things that we want to get done. Help me and support that vision and support this ministry in doing not only the things that I've already got in mind, but the things that God wants us to do that I haven't even thought of yet. So help us out in that regard. Praise God. Uh, ushers, come on forward here tonight. And uh, Father, we ask for a blessing over every gift and every giver and all those that financially support this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Many times people want to tough it out when they're sick, when they're not feeling good, when things aren't going right in their family, when things aren't going right in their body, in their marriages or things aren't going right in, in different areas. They like to tough it out. And particularly when it comes to sickness, people like to tough it out. They like to take enough medication. They want to uh, see the doctor. They'll, they'll take a little bit of uh, something at night, maybe to sleep a little bit better. And until it becomes unbearable, until there's a breaking point, if there is a breaking point, sometimes there's never a breaking point. But the option that we have is in Christianity is we are living a two dimensional life. Our, we have the one dimension that everyone else knows about, and then we have the second dimension that only Christians, and not all Christians, that only Christians that believe in the power of God know about. And over in uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, it says, professing uh, those that uh, believe in being Christians, uh, but denying the power thereof, avoid such men as these. So there are Christians, much of Christianity today denies the power of God, and when we have the option for the power of God, when we come to the edge of our rope, at the end of our rope, so to speak, we need to then submit to the power of God. But even then, people only partially submit to prayer, partially submit to God, partially submit to believing God is going to get them out of a situation. 
Let's go over to uh, John chapter uh, 16, John 16. And Father, I just thank you for this word and I give you glory for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 16. And tonight uh, my message is entitled, this healing service is entitled, uh, You Underestimated Jesus. You Underestimated Jesus. John 16 we see in John 16 that Jesus is in the last 12 hours of his uh, earthly ministry, earthly life, and uh, he's about to go to the cross. And in John 16, uh, in verse 33, again, if you have a red letter Bible, you can see that Jesus is speaking. He said, these things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Now, what is in the world? We know sickness and disease is in the world. We uh, know that lack is in the world. We know that we make mistakes. That is us living here in the world. And all of us, what Jesus is saying here, I have overcome the world. Now, he's 12 hours away from going to the cross, approximately. He's 12 hours away from giving up his life, and he knows it, and he's already predicting that he's going to be victorious in his ministry, and he's going to see it right to the end. He's predicting, I have overcome the world. Now, we know at this moment in time that he said that, that wasn't yet accomplished. We know it today, but it wasn't accomplished when he said this. It, he was prophesying, I am going to go to the cross, I'm going to do what I need to do, and all the things that no one really understood then uh, were made manifest when he died on the cross. Now, so he's declaring his victory, and I believe that we greatly underestimate, all of us, myself included, every great preacher out there, every great evangelist, we all greatly underestimate what Jesus did at the cross, what happened at the cross. What Jesus did at the cross is he overcame the world. He overcame the world with his blood. He overcame the world by allowing us to be forgiven. He overcame the world by allowing us to enter into heaven. He overcame the world by allowing us to come boldly before that throne of grace, asking for mercy and grace to help in our time of need, to come boldly. How many people come boldly to Jesus anymore or come boldly to the Father anymore? Most people, they enter into prayer and they go, God, I'm such a worm. I'm so such a sinner. I know that you and you're so busy with so many people out there. And, you know, if you have the time, maybe you could look at my situation and maybe, you know, if if you heal me of cancer, I'll I'll, I'll keep the arthritis or I'll keep the something. Or if you heal my child, then uh, it's OK if you put the sickness on me because I'm getting old anyway. And these are trade off prayers. These are not prayers that give God any honor, any glory. When we pray like that, we actually let him know we do not realize what he did at the cross. We don't realize the power of what he did. Go with me over to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. In Matthew 26, starting in verse 47. All right, so now just a little bit later in this in this 12 hour period of time, just after he was talking in John, while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the 12 came up, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one sees him. So Judas Iscariot is in this crowd. He tells them what the sign is going to be. Verse 49, immediately Judas went to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then they came and they laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus reached and drew out his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you not think that I cannot... Appeal to my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. How then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? So Jesus could have called on, on these legions of angels. Now, when you say legions, we're thinking of an army terminology. We're thinking of military terminology that he could have all these legions at his disposal and if you have an army, you have a leader. 
If you have an army, you have a king, you have a general. Now, back in those days, the kings went out to fight. When we talk about like Abraham going out to fight the kings, we talk about uh, different times where the kings went out to fight one another. We don't, we call them generals today. Back then we called them kings because they were king of their town. They were king of their city. They were king of their village. They were the leader. And so it fits that if Jesus can get an army underneath him, it fits that as a king, he must have an army even now. He had an army just at his disposal while he was still alive, much more so now that he's gone to the cross and that he's risen and has seated himself at the right hand of the Father. He has sat down, but he has an army at his disposal. This is what I believe. People do not understand what Jesus did at the cross. So when it comes to prayer, when it comes to healing, they marginalize themselves in their minds and they say, well, you know, um, I'll, I'll, if it really comes to that, I'll call on Jesus. I used to make this joke all the time from the pulpit uh, where people would come up to me and say, uh, you know, pastor, I think I need prayer. Now, I'm not talking about anyone here tonight because a bunch of people call me for prayer. But I used to make this joke and I would say back to people with a smile on my face. Do you think it's come to that? <laughs> uh, pastor, could you pray for me? Has it come to that? Has it come to that? Because we so often. We have relied on doctors, we have relied on, on, on medicines, we've relied on medications, we've relied on therapy. Nothing wrong with any of these things. We don't go to hell by using medications and medicines and going to see doctors and using therapy. Nothing wrong with that. But as Christians, we are two-dimensional. We have a dimension that we don't call on often enough because we don't give Jesus credit for the suffering that he had did at the cross, the humiliation that he had in his own life. It said that he, was, he walked around and he was rejected of men. Imagine that. Imagine being, re, as the son of God, being rejected by men, knowing that you are fulfilling prophecy, knowing that at some point you realize that you're calling and that you were the son of God, and still seeing the men reject you. All those things he put up with. Jesus said this over in John chapter 3, for everyone who does evil hates the light. Now, I'm not calling any of us evil that, that are Christians, but we know we're not perfect. We know we're not perfect. I'm not saying that we're evil. I'm not saying that I'm evil. But the point is this, is that we know we are. Jesus said when he was called good teacher, he said, no one is good but my father who is in heaven. And what Jesus was responding to is not his, his character as the son of God, but he's talking about his character as having an earthly ministry, that he was in an earth suit. That earth suit by design had a sin type attached to it. So when he said, no one is good but my father, what he was mixing in, even though he did not sin, he was mixing in the capability and the temptations of sin in this earthly life. And many times we don't come to the light because we recognize that, that sin capacity in our, in our hearts and our minds, and we don't want to come to the light. We're afraid to come to the light. It's not that we're evil. It's this that we are afraid to come to the light or even trust God with certain things. Let's go over to uh, Colossians chapter 2. Remember that this is a healing service here tonight. So when I am done teaching and preaching here tonight, then I'm going to pray for our live audience, and I'll pray for our prayer request here in general. Let's go over to Colossians chapter 2, and I'm going to start in verse 12. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way, nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. 
Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or Sabbath day, things which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let's look at all the things that are happening here. First of all, he, when we were dead in our transgressions, he went to the cross for you and me. When he, we were still dead in our transgressions. He was reaching out to us through the Holy Spirit and being called, come to Jesus, come to me, come to me. He's still doing that now. But now, because we don't recognize everything that Jesus did at the cross, we don't always come to him. And so <laughs> when Kathy and I are around the house and we're trying to fix something or we're trying to fix even a conversation that we're having between one another, sometimes we go, you know, I think it's time that we pray. Do you think it's time that we pray and we'll smile at one another because we recognize the the comedy that we have had for so many decades about needing prayer for our marriage or needing prayer just to get through figuring out a situation. And so, first of all, he's nailed. He's made us alive with him. Verse 13. We've, he's made us alive with him and forgiven all of our transgressions. All right. So that's what allows us to come boldly before that throne of grace, asking for mercy and grace to help in our time of need. We come boldly. The second thing is in verse 14, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us. All right. So he cancels all of the debts that we have. We have been forgiven and he cancels the debts we have both against both against each other and against heaven because of the crimes that we've committed, the things that we've done wrong. That was hostile to us and he has taken it out of the way. How did he do it? He nailed it to the cross. So our sin was literally nailed to the cross. Amen. When you think about that, and not just the sin was nailed to the cross, but all the different things that come with being nailed to the cross. What things were nailed to the cross? Our sickness was nailed to the cross. Our need was nailed to the cross. Our emotional capability to think was nailed to the cross. Then, verse 15 this is now it's been nailed. Now, what does he go out and do when he had disarmed the rulers and the authorities talking about demons and structures of demons? He made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. All right. So now he has control over the, the whole realm of demons. And why is this so important? Uh, many times. Let me back up. Back uh, about eight years ago, I started teaching on Wednesday nights and I taught on it for nearly two years for those that were coming to Wednesday night services way back then. And I started talking about pharmakia. Now, pharmakia is a Greek term and it's the Greek term behind the word sorcery and witchcraft in the New Testament. Pharmakia is where we get the terminology uh, pharmacy from. So it's a, it's a direct link to our Greek heritage and Greek understanding of languages. And pharmakia, pharmakia is being used like in the book of Revelation that they did not give up their sorceries. They did not give up their pharmakia. Now here's the problem. To try to teach on this and for me to teach on this, you're going to have to carefully listen so that you know that I'm dividing the word of God right without bringing condemnation on anybody. All right. Is there anything wrong with going and seeing the doctor and, and using pharmacia in order to heal our bodies or without without drugs and without medications? No one can be operated on. You couldn't get a knee replacement or a hip replacement or you couldn't get uh, work done on your, your your chest cavity without pharmacia, without medicines, without meds, without something to put you under. Same thing with going to the dentist if you want to go under, or even if you want a little bit of Novocaine. That is all under pharmakia. Here's the thing. We find out, though, in the last days and during the tribulation, when all these plagues are being brought on people, Scripture says in the book of Revelation, but they would not give up their sorceries or their pharmakia, meaning that there's a high level, not just of demonic warfare, but have you ever recognized what pharmakia does to you when you sleep at night? So Kathy was giving me, she got a little bit of a sense of what I was going to be teaching on today. She came and she came to me and said, she goes, you know, I don't even take all that much uh, medicine. She goes, and, 
And she goes, I can have a nightmare at night just from taking one Tylenol. Huh? What? Advil, excuse me, one Advil. And so one of the things that I've, I've talked about with people is, is that our body is made up in three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And normally, under normal conditions, spiritually speaking, it's nailed tightly together. In fact, uh, I think it was Socrates that said uh, the body is nailed to the soul. And, of course, he was only talking two dimensions rather than three dimensions of spirit, soul, and body. That's what happens. You're nice and tight in the spiritual realm. But when alcohol or, or let's just say, inebriation takes place, you ever see someone at a bar and say they were just talking drunk? Right? So you got your layers get broken up just like these pages are being broken up. And then demons are more easily can come in there. If you're a Christian, they can torment you. If you're not a Christian, they can inhabit you. They can inhabit your body. Uh, one famous preacher, uh, Derek Prince, in uh, one of his books talked about how when he was in his, I think it was he was in his 60s or his 70s, he had been preaching since he was a teenager, that a, a young man called him up and said, uh, uh, he said, uh, Mr. Prince, or whatever, whatever he addressed him as, he said, the Holy Spirit told me to call you and see if you would allow me to come over and pray for you. And he was fascinated by it. And, and the young man didn't know much uh, about ministry like Derek Prince had. He had been already ministering for 40 years, had been ministering on demons for 40 years. The young man came over and he said, uh, he told him to sit down and he knelt down next to him and began to pray over him. And he, Derek Prince said this. He said, I felt a demon leave me that I didn't even know was there. Now, whether it is in his spirit man or in his flesh, he said, and he was healed immediately in his physical body. Here's the thing. We know demons bring sickness and disease. We know that when Jesus cast out a spirit, a mute spirit, that, they, uh, that the man and the boy, and we know other, in other cases, that the person could see again and the person could speak again. Whether it was a young man or a boy, as we know in several different cases. So spirits inhabit bodies of good people and take authority over them and then bring sickness, disease, or at least you get to confess sickness and disease. I have, have many opportunities uh, to talk to people and over about sickness and disease. And one of the things that I keep telling people over and over again, even if you think it's true, don't confess it. Even if you've been given evidence that it's true, don't confess it over yourself. If you have to describe it to your pastor, if you have to describe it to someone, well, the doctor said that I have such and such and such, and they gave me an x-ray, he gave me a test, and this came out negative, it came out positive, however they come out. But don't confess it. When someone asks you, uh, how is it going? You don't lose all your marbles and go, oh, it's going terrible. You know, I lost this, I lost this, I lost this, I lost this, I lost this. Instead, say something that does not give the devil permission in order to stay there. So this story, which now is 40, 40 years old, Kathy comes home one night. Uh, I'm having problems with my leg. Kathy comes home. She prays over me. I'm healed. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, when this comes back on you, push it away by denying it. And, and I got the words to say. I didn't have all the words to say initially when I heard the Holy Spirit tell me this. So it came back on me about, I think it was three days, three and a half days later. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you lying spirit from hell, I cast you out in the dry places never to return. And I don't even know what I was saying because I wasn't, I wasn't that Bible literate at the time. So, and it never came back again. And it was a serious problem. So what I learned is, is that whenever you have a sickness or a disease that, is, that you can identify, first of all, rather than confessing that you have it, just say how you found out that you have those symptoms. 
And you have to be very careful. You do the same thing about your finances. You do the same thing about your marriage. You do the same thing about your job. How many people, I've, I've had maybe a thousand people work for me, and one of the things I've seen happen repeatedly is the devil gets to some very valuable person, and they come into my office and they say, I'm, ju I'm just not getting this. I'm just not getting this. And they come in again. They come in three times a day. Then you walk past their stall or their booth or their office and you, they, you can hear them talking to their mother or their husband or their, someone in the, in the booth next to them. I'm just not getting this. I'm just, I, no, he's going to fire me. He's got, I'm just not getting this. And before any opportunity for firing ever comes, they, got, they just, you know, a week later, they walk into my office and go, I'm just not getting this. I need to quit. I said, you're my best employee. You're producing more than anyone else. No, no, really, I'm just, and, and a fog will come over your brain because of what you're confessing. Amen. You have to name it and claim it as Jesus told us. If you want something, speak to that mountain. Command it to be removed. And you can reverse the process. You can bring a mountain into your life. Speak to that mountain, bring it into your life. Of course, at that moment in time, demons inhabit those types of responses. And then you've given them permission to now bring situations on you. I was talking to someone uh, today, and he was making a rural negative uh, uh, confession. And I know he's watching uh, live, but I'm not mentioning your name. And I said, you can't say that anymore. Stop saying that. He repeated it two or three times. He said, stop saying that. Because the potential for the thing to come to pass to occur. And many times, what do we confess when we are under the weather, tired, hurting, drinking, or on pharmacia? Every single thing that we say is something generally negative. It's not positive. How many people are saying, I'm healed, I'm whole, and speaking in other tongues when they're three sheets to the wind? You know what? I have, know all kinds of pastors that say, Pastor, I stopped drinking when I was 40. I'm 80 now, and I haven't touched a drop. Well, congratulations. But you're on six different medications, which is making you insane. We, had a, we have a family, and I know that the husband and the wife are watching tonight. I know they're not together tonight, but I know they're watching, or I believe they're watching. They came to me back maybe 10 years ago. He came and they came to me and said, uh, the husband was had back pain and he was on six different meds. I said, we'll come in for our healing service. They were new to the church. So they came in on the healing service and I began to pray over them and they got delivered. He got delivered from needing those medications. Now, whether he broke, he went cold turkey that night and because he just didn't need them or he, they, they drained off of him. His wife told me, I think it was six months later, she said, Pastor, I got my husband back. She said, when he went on all those meds, which took a, a period of time because of back pain from lifting heavy objects, he's, he's in an industry where he has to lift heavy things. He said he started getting more back pain and then the doctors just in kept, kept increasing the amount of medications that he was on until he was a different man. In the book of Revelation, in the tribulation, the problem with many people is demons are looking for that separated spirit, soul, and body. What separates that, what's going to be happening in the tribulation is, is a high use of medicine. Whether it be medicine that is uh, sold illegally, but more importantly, the Antichrist knows that he can control people that are medicated. And I know this because when I go to the prisons and I'm preaching in the prisons, the majority of the men there tell me I'm on heavy medication. Why are you medicated? Oh, because I'm bipolar. Why are you medicated? I have, a, I have several personalities. Why are you medicated? So medication makes people pliable, but it also makes them susceptible to demonic attack and to demonic possession. So, one of the things that we need to understand is Jesus, verse 15, disarmed the rulers and authorities, making a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. So how do we know that that's still, that, that thing, Colossians was written, 
some 30 years after, 35 years after Jesus went to the cross. How do we know that that is still continuing today? Because this is 35 years after he went to the cross. How do we know that we can see this today? When any, whenever you pray for yourself and a miracle occurs. We've had so many miracles occur just this week. We, Kathy and I were making a long list of all the miracles that happened to us in 2021. It's astounding. And then all the miracles that happened at this church. It's astounding. And that's not even counting people. That's just seeing things happen. It's because we pray. We're not, we're not perfect. We know that. But we know he took our sins and nailed them to the cross. And when he nailed them to the cross, he took them out of our way. They are no longer a stumbling block to your prayer. They're no longer a stumbling block to who you are. People say, well, I'm just not a good wife. Who cares? I'm just not a good husband. Who cares? I'm not a, you know, I haven't been really nice to my parents. That does have, have you, you, just by saying it, you've already repented. He's nailed your crimes to the cross, all your sins, every little one, every big one. And by doing so, by nailing it to the cross, he's made the power available. So how do we see him triumphing today? Through so every time you get an answer to prayer, you get an answer so today, I'm outside working. I wanted to put the plow on my truck. And it's snowing out, and it's cold. And all of a sudden, I knocked over my plow. Couldn't, my truck couldn't get at it, so I had to figure out how to lift it. And I'm out there with, with jacks and everything, trying to get the plow back up in position. And I bend over, and I pulled really hard. And I felt something. And I went right away, in the name of Jesus, you lying and I started praying over my back immediately. There was a time where I couldn't, I talk about not being able to walk and my knees and everything. There was a time where I couldn't bend over. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And one day I got so mad at the devil. I just, I was out, I was outside. I was saying something. Probably wasn't all holy. But I was said, in the name of Jesus, this back get healed. Demons flee. And maybe sometimes we need to be mad enough. And I wasn't taking any medications, but too many people today, instead of approaching the pastor, going to see the pastor, or asking the spouse or the children to pray, they just quickly go to the medicine cabinet. It's too easy. Call up the doctor. The doctor doesn't want to fix you. He just wants to medicate you. That's where the money is. And then if he gives you more medication, gets you hooked on the medication and then gives you more medication. You're not just hooked on the medication. You're hooked on the feed that you're giving him. You're feeding him. You're feeding his nurses. You're feeding. You're paying for walls. You're paying for chairs and computers in that facility. Again, there's no crime with going to doctors. There's no crime with using medication. There's no crime in, in, in being, getting healed through the modern medicines in the, of this age. There's no crime in it at all. We talk about different things that have been going on for the last two years, and people have come to me and go, well, Pastor, I, and then they tell me what they did. And I go, okay, that was your decision. It's, I don't hold that against you. I mean, people are acting like you know, they're damned if they do, and they're damned if they don't. And this is simply not true. That's condemnation of the devil. He made a public display. So when we pray over people, we make a public display and humiliate Satan and his demons even further. Amen. We continue to uh, humiliate them. And not, not all, you know, and not always is it public, but it ought to be public. And how do we make it public? We make it public by testimony. Kathy has got a great testimony that happened just yesterday. Absolute miracle of God she's going to give on Sunday. But we have so many miracles happening to us. And it came as a result first of prayer. Prayer was initiated. And immediately after the prayer, things began to occur. So angels in heaven saw this humiliation. Our angels still want to see this humiliation of Satan being humiliated and his host being humiliated. What are some of the things that we can get? Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Verse 3, it says, He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. 
All right, verse 4. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. So everything, he bore our griefs at the cross. He bore our sorrows at the cross. He carried them and it were nailed to the cross. We esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. We, we talk about what he did at the cross. I've gone into long teachings on all the pain he went through. But at the end, what I didn't do in my earlier years is get people to understand he did all that so that he could have all this power and we could have all this power. Amen. The power that was made available to us. Yes, did he suffer? Yes. But now he's victorious and he's given that victory to you and I. Hallelujah. Verse 5. He was pierced through for our transgressions. So he got nails in his hands and in his feet and in his side. He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, right? Our iniquities are those things that you can't see. They're like bruises. They're under the skin. So all, even our iniquities he was crushed for. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him. Or in other words, the chastening that he received so that we can have a clear mind that we're not crazy anymore. We're not double-minded anymore. We're, we're not uh, all the different medical terms for people that have two or three minds or more. And look at this. By his scourging or by his stripes or by his whipping, we are healed. He nailed our sicknesses to the cross. So anything, sicknesses, see, people think sicknesses is not the same thing as accidents. Accidents and sicknesses are the same thing. I know a man in the state, he loves me, doesn't drink a drop of alcohol, but he's fully medicated all the time. I say, man, you got to come into one of my prayer services. I'll pray over you and get you healed. So you don't need that stuff. He said, no, pastor. He says, I've had this now ever since I had my XYZ accident. And I know him very well. And I know he believes in healing. He just doesn't believe in healing from an accident. He believes in healing that it comes on you as a sickness or maybe you were born a particular way. I don't know what he believes. But I know he'd rather take the medicine than break down and trust Jesus. And I can tell you, my mother, who's a Catholic, came over to my house. She's babysitting our children for a week and a half. Kathy and I are gone to a trip down in Texas. We come back and I said, well, you got to at least come to the church with us. And now that we're back and she was going to get on an airplane later on that day. She goes, David, I, I can't even walk up and down your stairs. I've got this. I got that. I've got arthritis and several other things she was claiming that she had all related to, to arthritis. I said, well, mom, do you mind if I pray for you? It, it, with eight kids in the kitchen, two adults. I mean, Kathy and I as adults and my mother. It's It's a zoo. Chaos, unsettled. It didn't look like church, it didn't smell like church. And if you looked around, no one was dressed for church. I said, Mom, can I pray for you? She was in her bathroom. I prayed for her. She said, Woo, David, I feel good. She went home. She called me up a week later. She said, David, I got healed. She goes, Don't tell your dad, your father, but I, 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 as soon as I got home, I, I, I stopped taking all my medications, all of them. And I think it was six or eight or nine, whatever the number was, is immaterial, but it was over six. A week later, she calls me up and she goes, she goes your father just found out I wasn't taking any medications and he, he was yelling at me for a half hour for not taking my medications. I tried to convince him, Joe, I'm healed. Joe, I'm healed. But he didn't believe me. What should I do? I said, don't take your medications, mom. You know you're healed. Said, do you, have you needed them for the past two weeks? She goes, no. And I'm, 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 I'm running up and down stairs. It's pretty good for an 80-year-old. Well, whatever age she was, 75. Here's the point. The point is, is that Jesus nailed our sickness, our diseases, the injuries that we have suffered, the things that we've done wrong to our body, the foolishness that we brought on our body through drugs and alcohol, the things we've done wrong with our body by acting foolish and testing God. We've greatly underestimated what Jesus has done at the cross. We have not realized everything that's available to us. He suffered so that we don't have to. He was humiliated so that we don't have to be humiliated. 
Nothing wrong with a little bit of humility, but there is a humiliation that Jesus suffered that we don't have to go through. I'm now going to hit you with a lot of scriptures real quick. Let's go over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians 1, I'm going to start in verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize. Nothing wrong with water baptism. The Apostle Paul is saying, Christ, Jesus, did not send me to baptize people, but to preach the gospel, not in cleverness of speech, so that the cross of Christ would not be made void. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So when we talk about the cross, it sounds foolish even to a saint in the church. So, okay, yeah, I get it. I know he went to the cross. No, 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 you don't get it. We have underestimated what Jesus did at the cross. We have underestimated his power and the power we have available to us. Let's go over to Philippians. We can just go in order here. Philippians. Philippians 2, verse 5. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. That's the knee of every demon out there as well. Every knee will bow. Of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, so that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what are we seeing here? He humbled himself to get to the cross so we would have our sins and our sicknesses nailed to the cross. Let's go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds, you were healed. The healing is spiritual healing. The healing is physical healing. It is unlimited in his capability. And since we're in the neighborhood, let's go to uh, Hebrews, back up to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, verse 14. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and might free those who fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. What's one of the fears that we have right now? It's a constant fear that I know a lot, I, I I'm going to guess 80 to 90% of, of the people, of Christians out there deal with. And that is if they stop taking their medications, something terrible is going to happen to them. That's something bad. I'm not telling, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell anyone to stop taking your medications. And that thus saith the Lord, I, I heard from God, you're supposed to stop. If you don't have the faith for it, you need to keep, keep on taking them. But I believe that some of you are going to hear this message here tonight and you're going to, your faith is going to well up in you and you're going to believe God and God's going to speak to you. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and say, you can, you can drop that stuff off. Amen. Medications make people insane. Medications take, take good people and change them into other people. Amen. I've seen it happen over and over again. I've seen it, when I say over and over again, it's, that's not even the right terminology for me to use. I've seen it happen maybe to certainly hundreds, but maybe a thousand or thousands of people. And it's going to be happening in the tribulation that people will not be able to think clearly. They won't be able to think rationally and demon possession will be wholesale problems. 
Finally, I'm going to close it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. What Jesus did at the cross is any human being trying to explain the fullness of it would fall extremely short of it. Amen. Amen. Again, understand there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm not telling anyone watching us live or anyone that's here that God says thus and thus, you're supposed to give up your medications. That's not what I'm saying. You need to believe God to get off your medications and you can be believing God right now. It's up to you. It's your choice. It's not my choice. I'm not your doctor. For many of you, I may not even be your pastor, but I am a man of God. And I can tell you that God wants you to be free from things that are binding you because those things can wound you and injure you. You can fix one thing with medication and cause 12 other problems. I've had many adults come to me and say, Pastor, what do I do? My mother is in the hospital and they got her on meds and things are falling off of her. There isn't anything I can do. you got to go in there and somehow get things right because one medication causes more problems. You know all the commercials they have? They say this will heal this, 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 and this, but it'll cause, and then they talk really, really fast because they're required to by law of the 25 things that it could cause happen to you. You could lose your hair, lose your head, lose your hands, lose your arms. You might lose your life, you might lose your body. You know, you, all the things that are being listed to fix one small thing irregularity. Oh, this is really good. I'm going to take a pill for irregularity. I know how you fix that. And it's called eating healthy. But a lot of people don't want to do that. They'd rather take a medication that's going to wound them and injure them for the rest of their lives. Why don't we all stand here, if that's okay. I'm going to pray for all of you that are, are watching. Father, I just ask right now for anyone that's believing to get off their medications, anyone that's believing to be healed right now, anyone that's having a problem with demonic attack, I bind up every demon of hell that's causing you to be addicted to things, uh, be addicted to medications and drugs and alcohol and cigarettes, anything that you want to be broken free of you right now, claim that thing, whether I'm naming it or not, and say, agree with me. And even after we hang up here, say later on and say repeatedly, I break the power of that thing. Name that thing off of me in Jesus' name. Whether it's demonic attacks, whether it's nightmares at night, not being able to sleep, whether it's uh, uh, night sweats, day sweats, daymares, nightmares, whatever it is. And you break that power. Father, I just agree right now for everyone that's raised their hand toward heaven, watching us uh, at home, watching us on this video, that they're raising their hand for a reason. Father God, see their cry, see their prayer, and I command them healed in their physical body. I command them free right now from drugs and medications, every one that they have the faith to release off their physical body. I command it done right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.